We do want to walk you through the timeline of this case. Here is a look back at uh, what began that day in April and what has happened since. It should have been a routine stop that rainy Monday morning. Instead, the encounter between a Grand Rapids police officer and 26-year-old Patrick Leoya only escalates. The two struggle while a passenger in the car and a bystander watch. It ends with Leoya shot and killed. I understand how emotional this can be and recognize the frustrations that many in our community may feel. The strained look on the faces of Grand Rapids City leaders that day conveyed the seriousness of the issue as calls grew louder for the body camera footage to be released to the public. I intend to release the video as soon as feasible. Uh, my intention is to do so sometime next week. A day after the shooting, Leoya's father confirmed to News 8 that his son was the man killed. By Wednesday that week, with renewed request to see the video, Police Chief Eric Winstrom again reiterates he intends to release it. But Kent County Prosecutor Chris Becker issues a statement urging police not to release the police video until his investigation is complete. The Leoya family interpreter, though, tells News 8's Jacqueline Francis that they have seen the video. He shoot him in the back of the head. Say his name! Patrick! By Saturday, the city saw its first protest and vigil. We want our national civil rights attorney. And by Sunday, April 10th, famed civil rights attorney Ben Crump had agreed to take the Leoya case. Crump had previously represented the families of George Floyd and Breonna Taylor. Leoya's name was now national news. The crisis was entering its second week, and passions were beginning to ferment. While faith leaders called for peace in the city, that night's city commission meeting turns contentious. There were protests in the city. The briefing has been prepared so that you may have a better understanding of the circumstances which led to the use of force. And then, Wednesday, April 13th, in an afternoon news conference seen nationally, the city released no, the body no, cam no, video. Stop, stop. Put your hands The next day, the Leoya family, attorneys Ben Crump and Ben Johnson, and Kent County Commissioner Robert S. Womack hold a news conference and call for the still unnamed officer to be charged. Protests roiled the city throughout the weekend. Right there is a bullet wound of entrance. As the second week since the shooting starts, forensic pathologist Dr. Werner Spitz conducts a private autopsy at the behest of the Leoya family. He determines Leoya was shot in the back of the head. The Department of Attorney General is best suited to handle these cases. Speaking to the media later that week, State Attorney General Dana Nessel says she'd take the case if asked. I'm fully intend to handle this. Kent County Prosecutor Becker declines and insists he has no conflicts. On Thursday, April 21st, protesters march at the state capitol. And then, on Friday, April 22nd, Patrick Leoya is laid to rest. We want his name! Reverend Al Sharpton delivers the eulogy. He calls for the officer to be charged, demands the officer's name be released. That weekend, there are large demonstrations in downtown Grand Rapids. That following Monday, April 25th, three weeks after the shooting, Officer Christopher Schur's name is released. Schur is on administrative leave, stripped of his police powers, until both the internal investigation from Grand Rapids Police and separate investigations from the Michigan State Police are complete. No the protests continue. That Tuesday city commission meeting is forced to adjourn after protesters disrupt the meeting. The next day, the police union comes to the defense of Schur. The union says it's confident that a, quote, meticulous investigation will show the shooting was justified. That statement comes as the prosecutor, Becker, receives the state police investigation into the shooting. He says more casework is still needed. The week ends with reports on the toxicology tests for Patrick Leoya showing that he was over the legal limit for driving when he was pulled over. According to the Kent County Medical Examiner, Leoya's blood alcohol content level was 0.29. April turned to May, and unrest in the city continued to simmer. Another city commission meeting was disrupted and forced to adjourn early. Bricks, with messages angry over the police killing of Leoya and demands to defund the Grand Rapids Police Department are found at city leaders' properties. In mid-May, after weeks of silence, Becker says he's not close to making a decision in the death of Leoya and again calls for patience. As the month closes, 
Patrick Leoya's father is a guest as President Joe Biden signs an executive order for police reform in Washington.